All right, everyone. Welcome back to another watching talk here at Motive Anatomy. Uh, today we're going to clean the engine bay of Rosie after a 900 mile uh, road trip. I'm exaggerating. It was like 860 miles. Um, no, actually 880 because we were in LA when I did the last. No, 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 it was 862. Sorry, I remember taking a picture and when we got home, uh, mostly because I was just super excited that the car made it. <laughs> um, I, I took her to San Diego, which is an hour and a half uh, drive. And that was like the test drive. I was like, all right, if it does well here, then I might, you know, consider taking this one to the core experience. It did fantastic. Took it to the core experience, which was six six hours from some change. Um, so now I'm like, I can take her anywhere. Brazil, Chile. I don't, I don't care. I'll take it. Nah, <laughs> uh, probably not. Um, but yeah, it, it was a, it was a great time. Uh, the core experience. Uh, them for sure. Looking forward to going back. Um, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know where to stay. I didn't know. I didn't know anything of the platform or, or the actual geographical area. Uh, now that I do know, uh, next time we we do end up planning. Hopefully, it works out to scheduling. Uh, we'll be we'll be staying at a different place. We'll, we'll, we're, we're just gonna prepare it differently. And um, if uh, FM Spec and another couple of other buddies go with me, then it's, it's different, right? Because then we can go to some some other stuff. Um, I ended up going with my wife and, and Chubbs because FM Spec had a family thing that, you know, prevented him from going. And Armando uh, had said that he was down to go with me, but then he had already other plans that he had forgotten at, at the time of uh, agreeing with me. So I was going to bust the mission by myself, but um, I was like, let me ask my, my wife if she wants to go. Um, we're kind of on the hunt of going to different downtowns, and so we hadn't been to downtown Sacramento. And I know she would get a kicker out of that. She did. She enjoyed it. Um, but it was just like a quick quick round, uh, round trip since we do have some other big plans coming up for the summer uh, some of those include we're gonna go to Europe uh, for the month of July she's the one that schedules everything plans everything I just show up so yes uh, probably the month of July we're gonna have a little bit of slowdown in uh, on videos and that's fine um, it'd be amazing if I can you know reach out to some people in I believe London Italy and things of that nature. Uh, if there's a Cars and Coffee, I would be so down to uh, to meet up with them. There's only one gentleman. Uh, I think his name is Dave or Dav. I can't remember. Uh, he's in London, and so I'll reach out to him and say, "Hey, is there anything going on here?" And then see if I can make it out. It'd be pretty cool. Uh, but definitely, I'm not. Um, as you guys know, I'm more of a. Uh, I rather buy car parts than than go travel. My wife is the opposite. She rather travels and buy car parts, obviously. And so I'm just kind of like, okay, this is more of a trip to go and explore and, and disengage from you know social media as much as possible and our routine. Sadly, Chubbs cannot go. Um, we don't feel comfortable with him flying, whatever 14 hours it is. I don't even know what how many hours. Um, so he's gonna be staying here with Grandma and Grandpa. But um, yeah. Uh, this is going to be the longest I've been, well, for my wife, it's going to be the longest she's been away from home. Um, so we're definitely going to be missing Chubbs. Um, but yeah, that's the plan for July. And so I, that's the reason why um, I'm just trying to, you know, make sure that we button a couple things up. And, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't stay longer at Sacramento. Because uh, believe it or not, man, everything was super expensive. <laughs> the hotel was like $330 for one night and <laughs> it hurt. I'm not going to lie. I was like, what? <laughs> Let me just get three hours of sleep and I'll drive back. But whatever, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my family through that risk. Um, maybe if I was by myself, probably. But I, you know, I was with my family and Chubbs. So I was like, no way. So, um, I should say with my family, not family and Chubbs. Chubbs is, shoot, he's more family than than some of my family. Um, but anyways, I uh, decided to do the wash and talk on the engine bay first, and then you guys will see a, a different one for uh, the actual body. This is the first wash and talk with the white wheels, and you guys will, uh, will be able to see that it gets clean so easily. I don't know if it's just because they're freshly power coated and clear, um, but I'll keep an eye on them on t uh, to see how they do long term. There's Chubbs helping me, as always. And... Um, yeah, and the last Washington talk, I, I told you guys that I've been listening to the audiobook, uh, Think and Grow Rich. And I, let me just clarify, it's not that I'm trying to be rich, uh, to be like this multimillionaire individual, but I do, I'm not naive in thinking that things that I want to do, uh, do not require money. And so one of the things that I see myself, um, that I do have uh, a passionate uh, purpose for is um, continuing to grow this YouTube channel. Uh, for me to be able to continue to have more experiences, I've already been able to 
uh, experienced so many cool things, uh, not just get to know you guys, get to know your cars, uh, but even when I went to NorCal, uh, to, to have people I've never met uh, just say what's up and know so much about my life, you know, obviously whatever I do, I feel like sharing these conversations or in the videos, it was like, it was super cool, you know, um, I can go to a Carson Coffee, you know, five, ten miles away from my house and nobody knows about the channel. Yet I drove six hours and some people knew me like, you know, like, hey, what's up, man? Like it was it was it, it's humbling experience in a, in a great way. And so um, I think I, I I am constantly reminded that whatever I wanted five years ago, now I'm going through that. And so I need to be OK with, you know, the process and the, the speed that things are moving. Um, I'll be honest, guys, I would love to have a warehouse. I would love to have like an engine bay uh, set up where I could, you know, um, watch the cars, have multiple angles, multiple cameras, um, you know, go and get that Impala, go and get that, that Porsche. Like that would be cool. If that requires money, as obviously, as we mentioned before, um, but I'm not willing to put the time uh, to sacrifice the time away from family to go and pursue just those materialistic goals. And the reason why I'm kind of having this conversation with you guys is because uh, in the Minimalist podcast, uh, one of their guests, T.K. Coleman, uh, I really like that guy. He's really well-spoken, arti articulate uh, his, himself very nicely. Um, he had a near-death experience. Uh, he got hit by a car, and I think it gave him more than a concussion or something like that. He ended up being rushed to the hospital. And one of the conversations they were talking about was like, what was going through your mind during, you know, when you got hit? And and he was like, yeah, I'll tell you this much. It, it wasn't the material things that I own. It wasn't, you know, the extra pay that I got for doing an extra job or staying later or whatever the case may be. Um, and I was like, oh, that's interesting, you know, because we, we tend to forget how fragile life is. Life is extremely fragile. Um, and, and, and it sucks that it has to take a certain event like that to kind of put things into perspective. And so as much as I complain that I want this and that, like, um, no, nah, man, like you got to be grateful where you're at. Doesn't mean that you slack off. Doesn't mean that you don't continue pursuing what you want to do. Uh, but you also have to be in the moment and understand that there's more valuable things than money. And that's kind of where I'm at. Um, as of lately, I've been making time for my mom. Uh, more of a one-on-one -on -one. and I got this idea to have recorded conversations with her um, I don't know I just feel like a lot of people always say things like I never got to talk to my mom as much or I don't know much I do apologize about the angle of the video I know I'm showing you my stomach it's not the prettiest uh, angle so I do uh, I probably will not do this angle again but anyways um, and, and I get a lot of, I've heard a lot of people, different ages, like, oh, I don't really talk to my mom as much, or, or you know, if, if sadly their, their, their parents passed away, they're like, well, I didn't know much about them. And I thought about that, and I was like, well, my mom's alive, and we're, quote unquote, always busy. Uh, I'm like, no, I need to schedule. I need to schedule my time with my mom. And so, yeah, I've been, I've been having conversations for about an hour, an hour and a half, and then we eat afterwards during the week. Um, and then on Sundays, I still go with, you know, with the family to hang out. Uh, but I thought that it, it would be a cool experience. It would be a cool uh, opportunity for me and for her. Uh, I'm sure she's even listening to this because she actually listens to my washing talks and some of the videos. Um, so yeah, shout out to my mom. And she speaks English a little bit, you know, understands it. I guess she understands the bad words because she's always telling me like, hey, stop saying bad words or, or treat Armando and Francisco nice. I'm like, ugh. So anyways, um, but yeah, thanks mom for the, <laughs> the ad revenue. Um, but yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I've been working on. I think at the end of the day, uh, once we're done, once we're gone, because we're all going to be gone, sadly, uh, what is what is the thing that, you know, uh, remains? And so this car stuff is cool, I know, and, and I love this car stuff, but I think meaningful relationships. Um, I previously, uh, previously, just recently, I, I should say, I had a, a job interview and it was, I, I like, the way I like to interview is almost like having a conversation. I'm not too stiff. I'm not, I just have a conversation. And, and one of the questions was, what's your favorite part about, you know, the job that you do? And I said, you know, that's, that's funny because people forget what you say. People forget what you, you know, you did for them, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. And 
And obviously, I got a couple of nods from that, like, wow, you know. <laughs> but that's just the way I've been living my life, man. Like, I, I still remember the way my, my high school counselor made me feel. And I love that guy, man. I still text, you know, he just texted me last month, like, hey, save money. You know, the house is going to be cheap. And I graduated in 09, and, and he's one of my biggest role models. Um, and, and so... The way he made me feel, I forgot all the things he's done for me, but he made me he made me feel like I, I could achieve things, and, and I did, and so now here I am. And so now I'm kind of trying to mimic what he's doing with other youth. And so the way um, I, I feel when I talk to some of you guys is it's, it's amazing, you know? Uh, like I mentioned in the last Watch and Talk, like, yes, it gets, it gets tiring having to answer, you know, 101 questions via DM. Um, but then when I see you guys and meet you guys in person and you guys tell me like, yeah, man, you actually responded. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> it is going somewhere. Okay. It, it was, you know, worth the time. Um, and, and so I, I know that that would, you know, be something that I would appreciate if there was someone that I sent a message to and, and they responded. I'll be like, well, that's, that's pretty cool. They took the time to respond. And, and I can tell you guys, uh, one of the guys that, um, that did that for me, it was Scotto from the Hoonigans. I follow him on, on his personal and I've sent him a couple messages, you know, or just reply to some of his stories and, and he actually responds and I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool that he takes the time to do that. And so I, I think at the end of the day, it's just a matter of like do what's important for you whatever you know fulfills whatever mission you're trying to fulfill if you're not at the point where you want to be that's okay uh, but just remember that you keep striving you keep working hard uh, maybe some of you guys are going through the worst time in your possible life i uh, you know uh, hugs I i'm not a big you know religious person but hugs positive energy your way and i hope things get better um but just understand that it 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 could always be worse, you know, um, but at the same time, it could, it, it could always, um, it could always be worse. I don't know. I, I like to think of it that way, you know, and so once you look at it that way, you start understanding that um, life's a gift. Life is very fragile and, and we're only here for a certain amount of time. And so the last thing you want to do is uh, spend it uh, not doing productive things or not doing things that are meaningful to you. So. With this said, uh, thank you guys so much for joining. I definitely appreciate you guys. Much love and much support. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.